Alright, so let's talk about vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are basically places where our function is undefined and can never have a value. So, in a rational function, that's where the denominator will be equal to zero, basically. So let's take, for example, the function f of x. Now, at, when x equals zero, we get one over zero, which is undefined. Therefore, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So, now, we want to know, okay, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. What does that mean? So, that means that as our denominator approaches zero, the value of the function, in this case, gets higher and higher. See, if x equals 0.1, we'll have 1 over 0.1, which is 10. Or if x equals 0.01, we get 1 over 0.01, which is 100. And as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, approaching zero, our function will get bigger and bigger and bigger, approaching infinity. So that can kind of give us an idea of what our function is supposed to look like. So let's see what we can now deduce about the, what our graph looks like based on now that we know that. So as x, if x is a really, really large number, our function is going to be 1 over a really, really large number, which is really close to 0. So it'll be small, and then as, it, the, as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to 0, it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we know that it'll go and go and go and approach infinity, So, but it will never cross this um, x equals zero line. And the same, it'll do the same thing on the negative side. As x equals a very small negative number, the function will begin to get bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. So as x is really, really negative, it'd be a very small number close to zero but on the negative side and as x gets closer and closer to zero from the negative side it'll hit negative infinity so that's how we can use our curve sketching skills to draw one over x so now let's try a little more complicated looking function let's try f of x equals x plus three over x minus two well what do we know we know that at x equals two we'll get 5 over 0, which is undefined. So therefore, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And then we also know that our function here, our numerator, denoted by n of x, is x plus 3, right? So if our numerator equals 0, we have a 0. We have a root, an x-intercept. You can check out how we did that in our previous video on intercepts. And so we'll be able to tell that at x equals negative 3, we have 0. So using that information, let's try draw our, our graph. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, and we have a 0 at x equals negative 3. So a lot like this function, from negative 3 to 2, and actually from negative infinity to 2, as x gets closer and closer to 2, let's look at our function, as x gets closer and closer to 2, this bottom number becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, but it'll still be negative, so this whole thing will be negative. So as x approaches 2, from the negative side, this whole thing will get, the denominator will get smaller and smaller and smaller, and so our whole function will get bigger and bigger and bigger but it will still be negative. So it will approach negative infinity as we approach that asymptote, crossing at negative 3 because that's our x-intercept, until we get to negative infinity. And from positive infinity, well, as our x-values get closer and closer to 2 from the positive side, the denominator will get closer and closer to 0, and but this whole thing will be positive, so our whole number will get closer and closer to infinity, as shown by this, like our, like our graph shows here. So let's try a little more complicated looking function. Say we want to try f of x equals 
x times x plus 3 over x minus 2 times x plus 4 times x minus 3. Now, quick look, our numerator, well, that has a 0 at x equals 0 and x equals negative 3, so we'll note that. If we have over here, x equals 0, x equals negative 3, we have zeros. And our denominator, well, our denominator equals 0 at x equals 2, negative 4, and 3. So at any of these values, we'll have some number over 0, which is undefined. So that means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, negative 4, and negative 3. So based on that information, now this is kind of a complicated graph. And we'll learn how to do the rest of these parts later on in our videos on con concavity and critical points and things. But we know that we have a vertical asymptote at negative 4, 2, and 3, like we said over here. We have zeros at 0 and negative 3. And a quick check to kind of simplify this in your mind of how to make these, how to, how the function behaves close to these asymptotes is if the denominator, if the degree of the denominator of our function is greater than the degree of the denominator of the top, then as the function approaches any of its asymptotes, it will be approaching infinity or negative infinity depending on um, whether our value is positive or negative as it approaches the asymptote from that side. So in this case it's negative as it approaches it from the side so it's approaching negative infinity. Here and here it's positive so it approaches positive infinity. Here it's negative so it approaches negative infinity and here it's positive so it approaches positive infinity. How to tell if it's approaching positive or negative infinity? Just plug in a value really close to our um, close to the value of our asymptote. So in this case, we could plug in a value really close to x equals two, like x equals 1.9, and then we would come up with some positive number. So we know that we're approaching positive infinity from this side. Or we could plug in a number on the other side of two, like. 2.1, and we would get some negative number, meaning that we're approaching negative infinity. So, to help remember that, if we have a a function whose numerator has a degree of less than that of the denominator, then imagine if we just kept applying L'Hopital's rule. Right? I did a video on that. You can check it out. Um, we would eventually keep going until we got some constant over some function. So a constant over a function, as that function approaches infinity, that whole thing, that's a small number, over a really huge number, like infinity. And that will be zero. Okay? So if that helps. Uh, let's try now... There's another just little nuance of vertical asymptotes you need to know before you can say that you know about vertical asymptotes is that let's see this function x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. Well, our denominator at is equal to 0 at x equals negative 1. So therefore we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Okay, that's good. Now, but wait a minute x squared minus 1 over x plus 1, we could factor our numerator, then cancel our common uh, factors in our top and our bottom, and we get just x minus 1. See, this function looks a lot like this function, but it's not, because we still have this component. So we, if we wanted to draw a function like this, we could, but then we'd have to note that x cannot equal negative 1. And so that means that our function, f of x, is going to look just like x equals negative 1, only we'll have a, a hole at x equals negative 1. And we draw that like this. So we have our x, y coordinates, and we know that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, like we figured it out. And then we draw our line, x equals negative 1, but then make a little hole at our asymptote. And that's how we can have a vertical asymptote in a linear kind of mod, a linear kind of function, because 
not all asymptotes will cause a function to approach positive or negative infinity. Sometimes they'll just jump right over the asymptote and be have a value everywhere except that exact value where the asymptote is. So that should be all you need to learn vertical asymptotes.